Hi everybody, my name is Chris Harris, I'm from OWTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at how we can make an optically active compound. Um, now if you don't know what an optically active compound is, then you do need to read up on it as this video will assume that you'll know what an optically active compound is. Um, there is another video that looks into optically active compounds, so uh, if you want to have a look at that then just click on the link below. Um, but otherwise, um, we'll just assume that you know what that is. So, um, we're going to mix this optical active compound with mechanisms. Um, and we're going to show you um, how you can make something called a hydroxy nitrile. Uh, and then we're going to take it one step further. For those people who do AQA, um, we're going to take one step further to show you how you can make lactic acid. Uh, and we're going to look at the effect on um, optical active compounds in medicines as well and in uh, certain drugs. So, for example, thalidomide, etc. So, um, right, we're going to start with um, the mechanism. Now, the mechanism to make hydroxy nitrile follows a nucleophilic addition mechanism. Now, what we mean by that is actually the nucleophile in this case that we're going to use is cyanide, um, which is a Cn minus ion. Uh, and we're going to use it from hydrogen cyanide. Um, generally, hydrogen cyanide is very difficult to use. Um, not only is it incredibly toxic, but it's a gas. So normally what you would use um, for practicality reasons is something like sodium cyanide, um, which is a lot easier to handle, uh, but it nonetheless still can be quite dangerous because it contains the cyanide ion. So you would do all this in a fume cupboard. Um, and the addition bit is obviously we're going to add the cyanide to our carbonyl group, which is um, a C double bond O. Right. Um, I should also notice that if you're doing OCR, you won't need to know about this. Right. So we're going to start with this here first. So we've got our um, aldehyde, which is here, and this is ethanol. Um, now, if we take our ethanol and we're going to react um, cyanide with it. Now, this was formed from hydrogen cyanide, but we've taken the, um, we've actually taken the uh, uh, hydrogen bit off. So we're just going to draw this cyanide instead, so Cn minus. Now, when you're drawing a mechanism, it is important to show where your lone pair of electrons are. So in this case, our lone pair of electrons is sitting on the carbon. Um, it also has a negative charge, uh, and all nucleophiles must have a lone pair of electrons. And they don't all have to have a negative charge, but they must have a lone pair. And so what we're going to do is we're going to react this with our cyanide. Now, I'm just going to put our delta positives and delta negatives uh, on here. So our delta negative is on there, and our delta positive is on there, on that carbon. Now, this is important um, because we need to know exactly where the cyanide is going to react. So we're going to draw our arrow on there, we'll do this in green. So there's our cyanide. So electrons, so arrows go from where the electrons are going from and where they're going to. So they go from the cyanide to the carbon, which is on there. And then what we have is we have this situation where this double bond has to break and the electrons will actually get pushed onto that oxygen on the top there. And we actually form an intermediate stage. And our intermediate is this. So we have our CH3 which would be there, so I'll put it in the right way around, so CH3, um, C, H, we have our cyanide which we have just added onto at the bottom, uh, and we have an O minus with a negative charge on the top. Now there is another part to this, and um, this bit remember I said we had our HCN, um, the hydrogen bit will actually add on to the next stage here, so we're going to add our hydrogen in, I'll do that in red, so all our reagents are being read. So there's our H plus, um, which is on there. And what we're going to have is our negative charge, our electrons from our oxygen. And I'll stick one pair of electrons on there just to show it. Um, actually goes to the H plus. So remember the arrows, the curly arrows show the direction of electron travel. They're going from the oxygen to the hydrogen. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll write down our product. So our product is effectively this. So we have your CH3, which goes there, CN, which will go on to there, OH, and then H. Uh, and this, uh, you need to be able to name it as well. Now, you can see here that we have one, two, three carbons now. When we started off with, uh, right at the start, we started off with a, um, ethanol, which is an aldehyde. We now have three carbons, one, two, and that one, which has just been added onto our cyanide. Uh, we have a OH group hanging off the second carbon, 
So in this case, it's not an alcohol. We call this a hydroxy group instead. So we're going to call this, um, our hydroxy is sitting on our second carbon. So we're going to call this 2-hydroxy, which is this bit here. Uh, and then we have three carbons, 1, 2, 3, so that's propane. Propane, and then we just have nitrile onto the end. Now this is optically active. Um, it has a chiral centre, and there it is there on the carbon. So this means that this will actually um, have a, um, a it will actually have well, it'll actually have an enhancement, have a mirror image of itself. And the mirror image obviously depends on which way the cyanide attacks. And I've got a model to try and illustrate this. So you can see here's our and um, this would be our um, aldehyde. So if I hold it up like that. Now you can see we have our double bond oxygen, we have our hydrogen, uh, sorry, hydrogen there, and we have our CH3, which is on here. So this is our ethanol. Um, now, if we have, if I tilt it that way, you can see that this molecule is actually um, polar, it's, uh, it's planar, sorry, it's flat. So there's no bits that's actually sticking out top and bottom. Now, this is quite important, because when we have our cyanide, so imagine this is our CN minus, which is this bit here. So if I hold it up just at a slight angle like that, then what happens is your cyanide can either approach from the top, which is on the top there, or it can actually approach from underneath like that. And it can approach with, um, with, with no preference really, whether it approaches from the top or the bottom. And because we have no preference, actually what that means is that we can have um, a racemic mix. So we can have 50% of the time the cyanide can attack from the top and 50% of the time it can attack from the bottom. And because of that, we can actually get a racemic mix that's been formed here. And this is what I'm talking about over here. So this is optically active, so we can have a racemic mix. But actually, if we put this in a um, polarimeter um, to see um, if it rotates plane polarized light, you might actually find that it doesn't rotate plane polarized light. Because it's racemic, um, they actually cancel each other out. So that is actually um, an important point to notice. And, just be aware of that when you're answering questions as well. Okay, if you're doing AQA, um, you do need to know a further step to make lactic acid in particular. So lactic acid is 2-hydroxypropanoic acid, and all we have to do is we actually take this molecule here, this is your hydroxynitrile, um, and we're basically going to um, convert the nitrile group, which is this one here, into a carboxylic acid group. So here's your hydroxynitrile from the previous step. Uh, and if we add hydrochloric acid and water to it, um, then actually what you'll form is this, which is your um, lactic acid. So, and lactic acid is the, normally what's produced uh, in your muscles uh, by your cells um, when you have when you respire anaerobically, uh, and you get that pain in the muscles, or you get that metallic taste that you taste in your tongue, uh, and that is because of this, this lactic acid um, molecule. Now, this is actually produced. Um, um, again, in a racemic mixture, if it was produced synthetically, um, because we have a chiral centre again, um, then we can. it is optically active. So optically active compounds are actually, um, uh, can actually rotate plane polarised light. Now, in your body, um, you only produce one type of enhancement, and that's because your body actually uses enzymes which are very, uh, very specialised and will only make one type of the enantiomer, but synthetically you can make the opposite, uh, and that's actually lactic acid that's found in milk. Uh, so when milk sours, um, that's the um, the optically or the optically um, active enantiomer of this molecule here. So you do need to know about that as well. And this actually fits in quite well with medicine. Um, a lot of medicines actually have chiral centres in them, and um, some of the chiral centres. Um, your, well, the reason why they have a chiral centre is because they have a very particular shape and every cell in your body has a receptor site on the top of it and it will only fit, so this drug will only fit that particular receptor. So if we had a mirror image molecule, so an enantiomer of this one, that molecule um, probably wouldn't react with your cell because it doesn't fit in the same way as this molecule would. So it is very important that we have um, chiral molecules. But sometimes the um, the enantiomer, so you might have this enantiomer might, for example, um, cure a cancer, and the other enantiomer might not cure the cancer, might actually cause cancer sometimes. Um, if the other enantiomer is really dangerous, then you can't have these two in the drug, so both enantiomers in the drug at the same time. 
Um, a lot of the time, though, the open anatomy is actually just ineffective. It doesn't do anything in your body, has no harm. And sometimes the manufacturer can keep that, um, that other announcement in there, knowing fine well that actually it won't do any, it won't actually cause any harm. The problem is, though, is actually when you make your drug, half of that tablet is actually ineffective. It doesn't actually work. So um, what the um, manufacturer could do is try to separate these two enantiomers and remove the ineffective enantiomer and keep the effective one. But because these react in a very similar way, they're really difficult to, uh, to actually separate because their actual uh, properties are incredibly similar. Um, the only difference is, is that they're actually uh, chemically, in terms of their interactions with other chiral molecules, are different, but um, they are very difficult to separate. Now, a manufacturer might then go back uh, and might actually come up with a different synthetic route to try and make a molecule without the, um, the other enantiomer in there, but generally, um, some, most of the time, they just keep the enantiomer in there if it doesn't actually have a negative effect. Um, you do need to know um, about that basic effect, and there is a particular example, just to finish off, um, which is thalidomide, and thalidomide was an example where you had um, a chiral, you had a chiral center in the molecule, uh, one of them actually cured morning sickness, um, but the other one actually um, had a harm on unborn fetuses. So, and actually they were born with stunted limbs um, and um, other deformities as well. Now, obviously, um, that drug wasn't uh, didn't go through the testing didn't go through the testing period for pregnant uh, women, um, but obviously it's not allowed. Thalidomide is now banned, uh, and it's not taken by pregnant women at all. Uh, but it does have other uses now, which can be used for leprosy, etc. So, um, you know, some drugs are harmful with the other enantiomer in there, but the vast majority, actually, um, the other enantiomer um, is ineffective, and most drug companies just keep it in because it's cheaper to do. But you've got to know these mechanisms. Make sure you learn your names as well. So hydroxypropate, like your hydroxy nitrile, sorry. Uh, and um, if you're lucky enough to do A2A, you need to know how to make your lactic acid as well. But hope that helps. That's it. Bye.